Mercedes is officially implementing brain chips, a key to technology in their product development. Mercedes brain chip. These were two names that had not been previously connected, but you might be wondering, what does this opportunity mean for the ASX BRN story and for the Akita commercialization strategy in years to come? It's a truly fascinating partnership. It's a milestone day. You might've woken up this morning and seen the news and wondered, is it real? And what does it actually mean? Well, today we're gonna to unpack it all. We'll talk about Mercedes Vision EQXX car that they've unveiled at CES. We'll talk about the Akita implementation. And we'll also talk about the roadmap up ahead that it paints as the Akita can continue to proliferate out into a range of technologies, not only in the electric vehicle space, which of course it's primed for in the autonomous vehicle sector, but a range of other technology spaces because of its almost universal use case. It's a fascinating story. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. If you're new here, welcome. We make daily videos each and every day. So if you haven't yet, make sure you've subscribed, turn your bell notifications on so you won't miss any of our daily episodes as well. So here we have it, Brainchip and Mercedes. We can see here that this morning, Mercedes unveiled their Vision EQXX. They promise new EVs with much longer range. We'll talk about the range later on in this video and why it could be so important for the story. And we can see here that it has the potential of up to 1000 kilometers per charge. This is a significant amount of uplift. And it also might be starting to raise some eyebrows or some thoughts from other EV players in the sector, which of course could lead to other potential commercial discussions as well as this growing of the market. As we know, neuromorphic processing and AI at the edge is still in its early infancy. And so the more awareness that's brought to the broader market, the more opportunities that Brainchip has to sell and develop out Akita to a broader customer base. If you're wondering about the background, yes, I'm still in Fiji on holiday, but when I woke up and read the news this morning, I was excited. I wanted to have a bit of a discussion about it. I wanted to share some thoughts. Keen to hear your thoughts as well. So drop in a comment below what you think about the Brainchip opportunity up ahead. What were your thoughts on the BRN X Mercedes partnership? And what do you think it really means for the Brainchip story heading into 2022? And so I guess building on that discussion, what's the story? So at the moment, CES is going on. It's the annual consumer electronics show in Las Vegas. It's the largest of its kind in the world. And many of the leading companies in the technology and consumer retail space head there to unveil their new products their new technologies, many concepts, some are realities that are ready to go to market, but there are all eyes on this space because it is a huge trade show. And that is this morning where Mercedes unveiled their Vision EQXX car. As you can see here, the chairman mentioned that this is how they imagine the future of electric cars. They've only been working on this for around 18 months. One and a half years ago, they started this project leading to the most efficient Mercedes-Benz ever built. It's got outstanding energy consumption, which of course is something that Akita could help to feed into moving forward. It's got a range of more than 1,000 kilometers on a single charge using a battery that would fit even into a compact vehicle. It's a really fascinating offering and we'll talk about these efficiencies and how they've achieved them later on in the video. But what's really exciting is this second follow-up part. As you can see here, they were discussing their revised voice assistant. Of course, we know voice assistants are becoming more and more integrated with our day-to-day -day use. You can think about Alexa, you can think about Siri. Mercedes have their own version of this called Hey Mercedes. And they've stated that their revised voice assistant that will be included in this Vision EQXX is not only does it sound a little more natural, but it will be controlled by a new chip from the Akita series from Brainchip. It's a company that's developing chips for AI applications. On long journeys, the EQXX has the ability to use artificial intelligence to compile energy saving playlists, could give tips on driving style or point out interesting places and information along the way to name a couple of those opportunities. Before we dive into this video and talk about the potential implications for the commercial story up ahead, a reminder, I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing we discuss on the channel's financial advice. Obviously, the stocks we cover are not buy recommendations. These videos are all just here as that general discussion to be a starting spot for you to do your own research from. And a thousand kilometer drive on a single charge on the battery was something that was announced with this Vision EQXX opportunity. You might be wondering why that is so important. And here were some of the different insights surrounding a couple of articles that were released on the day as well. So importantly, Mercedes engineers didn't just drop in a bigger battery and call it a day. That is often the conventional strategy that we've seen many different electric vehicle manufacturers use. It's understandable, as stated here in this article, more power on board means more power for driving. However, we know that batteries mean that it could be heavier and ultimately a less efficient vehicle. And this is what Mercedes were trying to avoid and an opportunity that they saw too. We know that there's an electronic shortage. We know there's supply shortages and bottlenecks around the world. We all know that we're about the semiconductor shortage that's playing out. So squeezing in more battery cells looks difficult to actually implement. And so there's a shift away from just implementing this bigger battery. And this is where Mercedes tried to feed into it. 
The electric range sounds easy, but it's a complex technical challenge. As I said, they could have put in this bigger battery, however, they were leading to diminishing returns due to the size and weight. And so what Mercedes have tried to do is try to optimize efficiencies through, of course, engineering, and they've tried to really focus on the opportunities to optimize these efficiencies, get the most bang for their buck in terms of the vehicle that they produce. But I think what's really interesting when thinking the next step ahead as well is, if you think about Akita's technology, what are some of the cornerstones of the benefits they provide? Energy efficiency, power efficiency as well. So of course, you could look for further efficiencies on the technology front, the software front as well. And this could mean that there's a larger role that Akita could potentially play moving forward in terms of efficiencies, not only in Mercedes car, but of course, if other automotive manufacturers get word of this and they were looking for efficiencies or just want to make sure they're not conceding a competitive advantage, they might reach out to a company like Rainship and see how Akita could help them out with their development. Because we know efficiency is the name of the game in most of the products that are developed around the world. And so where to from here? On the left, we can see some of the names that have previously been linked with Brainship as part of the EAP early access program. Valio, Ford, of course, now you can add Mercedes to that list in terms of potential partners. But what I do think is really interesting is a couple of the recent discussions surrounding Mercedes, of course, today, but also Megachips a couple of weeks ago. Neither of these names had been linked with Brainship's EAP early access program. And what that indicates is there could be a myriad of other customers out there, a myriad of other potential commercial partnerships that are in development, that are testing Brainchips Akita technology that just haven't come out to the market yet. Of course, we've talked at length over the past couple of years about the fact that it's a commercially sensitive space where non-disclosure agreements are commonplace and where you don't want to be conceding competitive advantages. And we've seen that flow through with the Megachips discussion and the Mercedes discussion as well, that none of this information was known to markets. There weren't a lot of dots being joined. However, it doesn't mean that there's not discussions going on behind closed doors. It's just a commercially sensitive space. And then I think when we move on to the other side of the coin here as well, these are just some of the industries that BRN have provided themselves about the potential opportunities that Akita could feed into. Security, healthcare, smart cities, automotive, manufacturing, communication. But Akita is product agnostic. It's not tied to a single sector or a single use case. It truly does have flexibility and diversity. And so moving forward over the longer term, it's going to be fascinating to see where Akita could proliferate out into. And I think it's pretty interesting if you just start to think about the opportunities that we've seen with only Mercedes, but then also moving forward in years to come. And so just having a bit of a think about how that works in practice, Mercedes-Benz have provided some insights into their new EV, the Vision EQXX. They'll obviously be deploying neuromorphic computing with a car that thinks like you. Of course, we know that Brainship Cicada technology is centered around spiking neural networks, SNNs, and initially, as we've discussed, it will be deployed with the voice assistant, Hey Mercedes. But I think just thinking about what this really means, that broader picture, obviously one initial deployment of the brain chip Akita technology in a product, that's fantastic. We've talked about that previously happening. But Mercedes acknowledges that while neuromorphic computing is still in its infancy, it states that similar systems will be available in a variety of consumer products within a few years. And when applied at scale throughout an electric vehicle, the technology has the potential to significantly reduce the energy needed to run the artificial intelligence technologies that will help to control the EVs of the future. It's pretty fascinating. If you think about a company like Brainchip who's hoping to deploy an IP licensing model, obviously it's not one chip per product. For each of the different processes can require a range of different chips. And obviously chips can stack on top of themselves as well, depending on the compute power that are necessary. And so as a result of that, obviously initially Mercedes will be utilizing this in their voice assistant. But if they find success, if they see a step change in terms of the processing power that they have and all of the other ancillary benefits like power savings and efficiencies that are achieved, then obviously they'll look for other processes that they can look to deploy Akita with and then potentially think about other consumer products that this can be utilized in as well. And it doesn't just stop with Mercedes. Other companies in the space will, of course, have had their ears perk up. They'll have heard about Akita and they'll be looking as to whether there's any opportunities within their products that they could deploy Akita with. And not only that as well, they'll also be not wanting to concede a competitive advantage. And so if they know that one of the companies in their space is potentially considering something like Akita, they will then look to secure that type of product as well to ensure that they have the benefits within that. Obviously, you can start to see how the snowball can start to pick up pace over time. We've talked about Brainship making a market. You've got to educate the market. It takes time. AI at the edge is a new space, but it is one that is primed to grow. And Brainship also looks like it's in a pretty fascinating position to ride the tailwinds moving forward if it can continue to deliver. And so just having a bit of a think about that building of the market, it takes time. But if you have a look at some of the news articles and some of the discussions surrounding just the news flow this morning, 
just over the past half a day, 12 or so hours. You can see a range of different publications discussing the new Mercedes-Benz Vision EQXX. There are a lot of eyes on CES, as we mentioned, and obviously Mercedes is a household global name. But in each of these articles, you can see that Brainship, Akita-based AI, has been referenced here as well. And so obviously it's bringing a lot of eyeballs onto the Brainship and the Akita story. And this is something that will continue to develop over time. Just took a little bit of an excerpt out from one of the articles I read this morning. It stated, okay, Elon, this is where it gets serious. The Mercedes-Benz Vision EQXX is what folks who have been building automobiles for more than a century can do. And now, obviously, Elon Musk is going to be looking at what the EQXX has, what are the specs, what's the technology it's using, how have they had and been able to corner some of those competitive advantages. And who knows, you can't speak for Elon Musk. Of course, he'll be thinking on his own, but there's no doubt that he's probably going to be considering, okay, is there a way that we can capture some of the opportunity that Mercedes-Benz is feeding into? And who knows, maybe even he's thinking about Akita, but obviously it's much broader than that. Elon is just one person. The automotive industry is much broader than Tesla. And also the opportunity for Akita is much broader than just the automotive industry because of the flexibility and the product agnostic nature of the Akita technology. And so the question always comes back to, should we be surprised? What happens from here? Before we explore this, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. As mentioned, if you're new here, welcome. We make daily videos each and every day. So if you haven't yet, make sure you've subscribed, turn your bell notifications on so you won't miss any of our daily episodes. I think if we're thinking about what happens from here, there really is a few different schools of thought. For those longer term BRN investors and those who have been following the story for a while, nothing really changes. It's always been a case of when and not if commercial deals were going to flow through. We know that there was an extensive EAP early access program. We've understood and discussed that it's a space that's crowded in, of course, confidentiality agreements because it's a competitive space. So as a result of that, I think most investors knew that eventually we'd start to see Akita flowing into products. Mercedes is a big household name. Don't get me wrong. It is a massive milestone. We can't overlook that. But it's not too surprising because it seemed like an inevitable development. Of course, it's probably going to bring more outside eyes onto Brainship, further validation of the technology, further validation of the mission, further validation of the fact that it's the only commercially available neuromorphic process processor, and this is going to be an important space to facilitate AI at the edge. But for the long-term investors, not much has changed. There'll be plenty of smiles, I'm sure, and plenty of celebrations on a fantastic milestone day. And the share price obviously has had quite a significant rise as well. But of course, it seems like the tip of the iceberg is only just starting to be unveiled. There's definitely plenty more to look below. The bus is just starting to leave the station. And so it's going to be fascinating to see where the journey heads. Who knows where it heads? Of course, nobody knows. There's going to be lefts, rights, twists and turns. But it definitely looks like a fascinating and compelling growth runway up ahead if ASX BRN can continue to deliver. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd love to know your thoughts. So drop in a comment below what you think about Brainship, what you think about this deal with Mercedes and where you think the story heads. Akita Ballista, stay safe, stay well, and happy investing.